Greetings dear friends, I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Ford Explorer. Bulk of the cars on the Russian market, of course, are all-wheel drive. Rear-wheel drive are available, but there are not many of them. The transmission itself is quite reliable. Shafts and drives almost always serve more than 200,000 with rare exceptions. The cost, however, is not very human. But if you use the support of the owner community and actively study American resources, you can find options. There are two main types of transfer cases on the Explorer 3. On most cars, this is a Borg Warner BW4 11 one with an auto-engaged front axle drive. This drivetrain layout is part of a control track safety system and is standard on the model. Less than 10% of the cars had an advanced track option and the BW4412 gearbox with a full center differential and the 3565 torque distribution. Both dispensers are characterized by good stability and safety margins. Breakdowns are usually associated with loss of oil, carelessness of operation or chain pulling at high mileage and load. In most cases with runs of 200-250 thousand kilometers, there are no serious problems with them. However, it's already necessary to monitor the oil seals and breathers and the control electronics sometimes fail. In rare cars where the front axle half shafts are disconnected by pneumo hubs, the hassle is much greater. Leaks and failures of the system valves by the number of breakdowns are noticeably ahead of the number of hardware and electrical failures. In any case, with the price of a contract transfer case in the range of 15-20 thousand troubles, there can be no serious problems from this side. But the almost uncontested automatic transmission of the 5R55X series is a lot of trouble. It is a pity that the manual gearbox on the Explorer is rare, because the M. 5OD gearbox on pickups has proved to be extremely reliable. The problem with automatic machines is, first of all, that at the time it was a new experimental series. Childhood illnesses were treated gradually, but at the time of the release of the third generation Explorer it had not yet been brought to mind, and in general the design was not the most successful. The cars of 2002 and 2003, which were supposed to be modified 5R55W, are specially affected. After that, the already noticeably improved 5R55S was installed. The extremely unsuccessful torque converter GT of the first releases was refined several times and still remains one of the weak points of the box. Usually buying a new gas turbine engine is not the best solution, but not in the case of this automatic transmission family. Here, not only the blocking linings wear out, but also the elements of the torsional vibration damper and the design of the vane apparatus is rather weak. What problems evade boxes on Explorer? On cars manufactured before 2003, there are old style brake bands with an unsuccessful stop design. It simply breaks off. Surprisingly, box services managed to find tapes of the old design during repairs, because they use old catalogs. A turn stop on the belt is not only problems with shifting gears higher than the second, but also damage to the piston rod and cylinder servo. Rod seals in the well body and a sharp drop in oil pressure. The design of an oil pump with a valve that rarely travels more than 150,000 km is very unsuccessful here, and even less with the rare oil change and its contamination. With its incorrect operation, the scenarios are different, from impacts on a cold one to slipping on a hot one, or even just scuffing for the bushings and complete failure of the box, when the valve is additionally clogged with debris due to dirty oil and high loads. An early overdrive drum with a 24 tooth sun gear is frankly unreliable, but apart from boxes with a 4.6 motor after 2003 with 3080s is also not ideal. It wears out the same way. It just doesn't fold from the moment. The overrunning clutches of the reverse and overdrive drums are also weak. Separators are crumbly. If the first and second gears disappear, then this is it. Overtaking. The forward planetary row also fails. Over time, vibrations begin and in advanced cases, complete destruction is possible. In general, the box is problematic and naturally suffers from the traditional bokeh of purely operational problems with the rare oil change and overheating. If you drive calmly, install an external radiator and an external automatic transmission filter and renew the oil every 40,000 and more, there is a chance to travel 300,000 or more before overhaul. But almost no one does this. For an average driver, the box begins to kick at 120 plus runs and usually with increased blows reaches 200 250,000, if the style of service doesn't change. Minor repairs are possible with the replacement of sensors, solenoids in between. 
After 200,000 mileage with such barbaric service, almost all boxes will require a fairly serious repair. A typical list of works and spare parts includes at least a complete restoration of gas turbine engine, which is much more expensive than just cutting and changing linings. The obligatory replacement of the oil pump valve clutches and steel rings of the forward and rear packages, brake bands and the drive piston. Often restoration of the piston cylinder and the reshape resharpening of the rod bore are added to the list of works, almost necessarily. A set of solenoids cleaning the well body over running clutches. Very often the planetary gears themselves require replacement or restoration. But there is also good news. The average price of repair with the replacement of one planetary with a restored one is about 90-110,000 rubles in price of the beginning of 2019. Because the spare parts for this automatic transmission are relatively inexpensive and available, and it is repaired, again comparatively simple. But there are enough repairs for twice the price. The reason may be either the killed unit or a banal deception. The situation with used boxes is complicated. They installed it mainly on purely American Ford and Lincoln, which are few not only in our country but also in Europe. The only exceptions are the Jaguar S-Type before 2002 and the Mazda BT-50, that are also not the most common cars. Therefore, the repair of the unit is preferable to attempts to re replace it with a more live one. Moreover, there were complaints about the quality of this box not only in Russia, in the USA this automatic transmission is also considered not particularly reliable and resourceful. There is a considerable risk of buying a used one and a year later getting the same bunch of problems as on the original box. There were no serious common problems with the attachments of both Ford Explorer engines. Solid radiators, good location of most of the nodes, good accessibility. Some oddities with the wiring of the engine compartment by and large do not bother the owners, how the braids are laid. These are purely internal problems of the manufacturer and electricians, except that in the event of serious accidents questions remain, but in such cases there is no time for wiring. The most common Explorer engine V6 for 0.0 cologne with two camshafts, one for each cylinder head, as already mentioned, is of German origin, but it was installed only on American cars and has an indirect relationship to OHV6 from Old Scorpio. At the same time, if you look closely at the gas distribution system, you can see the furry roots. Once the camshaft was located in the collapse of the block and actuated the valves using pushers. Now in the SOHC version, Instead of the camshaft, there is an intermediate shaft in the camber, driven from the knee by a short chain. The camshaft in the heads are driven from the intermediate by separate chains. The chain is located on the left cylinder head in the front and on the right in the back. The design is unusual and not particularly reliable. The main suppliers of problems are not the chains themselves, but they are tensioners and dampers, structurally unsuccessful and flimsy, with a resource of about 150,000. The plastic damper can easily green when the chain vibrates and the residues clog the oil intake. If both chains were in front, the labor intensity of replacement would be low. Even the radiator doesn't need to be removed, but you cannot easily throw off the rear chain. You need to either take out the motor or, in extreme cases, undock it from the automatic transmission and move it forward. The operation, as you might guess, is complicated and expensive in any case. The cherry on top is also the price of quality parts. At a high cost of work, it makes no sense to save on iron, and together with tensioners dampers, it makes sense to throw the chains at the same time. At the same time, good motorcraft and cloys are expensive. A set of chains in the USA is $500, in our country it is much more. Any savings can lead to a reduction in the service life of the repair kit to the figure less than 100,000, which is simply indecent. Along the way, you will probably need a new crankshaft damper. It deliminates and the jerks of the engine with the faulty timing belt quickly finish it off. And do not forget to plug off the hole in the back cover, it is prone to leaks and it's better to replace it with a new one. Well, often when they get into the engine, it turns out that the cylinder head also needs repair. The welds there are not almost successful, they sink a lot or even crack. Set aside money right away for head gaskets and head covers, crankshaft rear oil seal and often for exhaust manifold studs. When repairing, they usually immediately weld the USR tube. It cracks here, well, and the little thing, nozzle rings, sealants, candles and much more. Put on Discovery 3. The price of parts is surprisingly often lower than that of Ford. For example, sets of rear and front tensioners are less than 5000 troubles each, with chains and dampers with fasteners included. In an amicable way, it's necessary to shake up the tensioners and dampers. 
Yes, with the motor hanging. Every 150 to 100,000. If you follow the philosophy still looks like, then you can reach up to 250 or even to 300. But then during the repair, the scenario will be closer to the health capital and attempts to tailor only lead to new expenses. Or selling a car to a new adventurer. It remains to note that the motor is very sensitive to assembly errors and they are often made if they try to crawl up and change the timing partially and even without removing the engine. Colors put on the wrong side, lost phases, unsuccessful components, these are all real stories. It would seem that the 4.6 liter V8 engine is not much more powerful than the V6, 244 horsepower against 210, 219. Who needs it? Meanwhile, cars with it are in much greater demand. After all, this engine belongs to the Coyote family, it's simply powerful and extremely reliable, especially against the background of the honest one. The timing here is also not eternal, but at least it changes without removing the motor and it's relatively inexpensive. It doesn't break dampers and chains do not slip. True, there are complaints about the early wear of the valve seals only after 160,000 mileage, the inconvenient location of the spark plugs which leads to breakdowns during maintenance, the leakage of the nylon intake manifold in the front part, sometimes leading to water hammer and overheating, in short, not without sin. However, the intake manifold of the latest releases has been changed. It now has an aluminum insert in problem areas. The services have been clearly explained how to handle candles and other things. After 300,000, Coyote begins to eat up oil, and quite actively. Consumption of more than 500 mm per 1000 km is not so rare. There is a positive experience of curing the oil burner with chemical decarbonization without replacing the rings. And this information about the problems of Ford Explorer 3 is exhausted. If you know more or do not agree with what you heard, I am waiting for you in the comments.